Hello and welcome back to CSS3 Animation. In our last video, we created our first transitions where when we hover over each of these list items, uh, the list item itself animates out, its height gets taller, and whenever we move our mouse cursor away from it, it animates back to its original position. So that's a good start, but I wanna take a look at some other things that we need to do. So let's jump back into our code. We've actually moved into a new folder now. So I've taken all of our files, duplicated them, moved them into lesson three. I've renamed them a little bit. We have an index.html file now. And in our CSS folder, we have a file called css3animation.css. So here we've created two properties that take care of this animation force. And it's cool that we can do all of that just using two simple CSS properties. However, it gets a little bit more complicated because this doesn't have full browser support yet. So we need to include a few more properties here that are basically copies of the current property, uh, but with vendor prefixes. So in addition to transition property height, I'm gonna copy that, paste it one, two, three times. And for the very first one, we're going to put a vendor prefix of WebKit on it. So dash WebKit dash transition property. And then on the next one, we're going to do the same thing for Mozilla browser. So dash MOZ dash transition property. For the next one, we're going to include Opera. So oh, not zero, but dash O, the letter O dash transition property. And then we'll have regular transition property height. So then we'll need the same thing for transition duration. So we'll copy that and paste it three times so that we have four total copies. And then we'll put our WebKit vendor prefix here, our Mozilla vendor prefix here, and our Opera vendor prefix. So you'll see that once we've added all of those, saved it, jump back into our file and refreshed, everything still looks the same but we need to be sure to include that to make sure that we're uh, making this work for as many browsers as possible. Now there's still gonna be some old browsers where these transitions aren't gonna work and that's okay because when we have that, it'll simply change, the height is what we're animating here, so the height will simply change from 20 pixels to 30 pixels. There just won't be an animation to get us from here to there. It'll just be a simple change in height. So that doesn't break the look of the website at all. It simply functions a little bit differently. We don't have that animation there if we're using an older browser that doesn't support this transition property. So again, anytime you're creating transitions like this, make sure that you include all of those vendor prefixes just to make sure that you have all of your bases covered and that you have as many browsers supported as you possibly can. So thank you for watching, and in the next video, we're going to talk about easing functions in CSS3. So I'll see you in the next video.